Hey everybody, it's Mergle, and today I wanted to show you how to make profit in your garrison. We don't make gold anymore. You remember the eras of making gold, and uh, uh, you probably have like 15 alts, right? That's even more than the max on each server, but you got like 15 alts, and you're just farming a man. You were printing with your illegal gold press and your garrison with all those alts because you wanted profit that was AFK, and you were draking in like 5k a day from each character. Print, 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 print. That's how it went, right? Now you probably don't log on those alts. <laughs> they haven't seen the light of day since, uh, you know, August 30th, right? They, they've been gone. And um, in any case, I want to have a reason for you to either return to your garrison, maybe on your main character even. Why not? It doesn't take that long. And uh, those alts that you probably never use anymore, they can come back alive. There's a reason to log into your garrison. I'm going to go over it. So... Let's just look at my mission table. You can see all the ones that I've sent. You can see 135, 102, 150, 1.1k, and 2.7k resources. These are pretty common. This is what my mission table looks like on pretty much every character every single day, sometimes even more. It gets crazy amounts. Resources are the things you're going to want to farm. And uh, I will explain why. So let's go back to our architect table. You can look at all my buildings here. We have the Lunar Fall Inn. Lunar Fall Inn is important because it allows you to recruit a follower. So if you don't have followers, which the trait for gold farming, by the way, transferred into the um, Extreme Scavengers. So if you had a bunch of gold farming characters, they're now Extreme Scavengers. If you already had an optimal garrison set up with the gold farming trait, you don't really need to recruit more followers. All of your followers probably have this. And... Um, that's what the Lunar Fall Inn is for. But getting it to level 3 is still important because it allows you to have more garrison mission, resource missions. So having a Lunar Fall Inn is no downside whatever. It's perfect for AFK garrison profits. Definitely recommended. Um, barracks. The only large building that I recommend is the barracks because it gives you access to... Um, five more followers if you get to level three so you can send more missions because you have more followers definitely useful recommended the other ones not all that important at least not to me i think the dwarven bunker um of course it has a different name on the horde i imagine but the dwarven bunker uh, i think this is the one that has transmog gear i can't remember if it's in the barracks or if it's in this one but that might be a reason to have on this as a large. The only reason I have the Mage Tower is because back in Wad's era, when flying didn't exist, I used it to teleport around. It was really useful. Other than that, didn't care. Um, that's it, though. That's really it. Uh, those two large barracks, really the only one I recommend for AFK profits, though. So definitely pick this one up and level it up. Now, mediums. The other building I have is a trading post and you only need to get the trading posts to level one you don't have to get level two unless you don't want AFK I'll go further into detail about that but level one's important if you want the AFK profits which is what you're probably going for with those alts level two not all that necessary now let's uh, talk about smalls small buildings salvage yard definitely recommended um, it doesn't give you as good a crates and I'll show you in a little bit what the large crates give, but definitely recommend it because it gives you a lot of resources and um, some bonus profits occasionally. Um, I'll show you in a minute. And now finally, the other smalls, Enchanter Studi, I would recommend on any character, even if it's not an uh, Enchanter, because you're not really placing the work orders, you're using it to benefit you while having the salvage yard. So I'll go into detail why. And then finally, the Tailoring Emporium. This is only if you're a tailor. If you're not a tailor, don't bother because it allows you to place work orders that gives you the tailoring supply required to make hex sweep bags. So unless you're a tailor, the other small building isn't all that important. I'd go with the storehouse. This is like what all my alts had. And uh, storehouse just allows access to your guild bank and your bank and all that other stuff. So it was really useful in that, in that aspect. But... Now, let's go out there and uh, explain each building. So, I'll show you what the Lunar Fall Inn is, in case you don't know. You go inside, and you can recruit a follower. So, you'd walk in, and you talk to the lady inside, and say you're looking for a follower, and you pick the trait, and then she, whatever trait you pick, 
is what she shows you. So she, you just say, I want somebody with extreme scavenger, and she'll give you options with extreme scavenger. Boom. You can get, uh, it's once per week, but you can stack these up, and eventually you'll have max extreme scavenger. So you'll get more resources. Now finally, the trading post is where you're going to spend all of your resources. Because every single day, the trader changes, but they always have the same stock. Just how much it costs changes. This can be all the way up to 40. It's like 20, 24, and 40, I think. So it varies depending on what the price is. But these items, true iron ore, black rock ore, sumptuous fur, and raw beast hide are the ones you want to really focus on. Because they're usually 3 to 4 gold each, like true iron ores, 377 on my server right now. Black rock ore, really cheap, 34 silver, somebody must have spammed a lot. This is 398 on my server right now, sumptuous fur. And it's because it's used to make Hexweed Bag, which is still the prime bag. It's uh, 30 slots. There's only one bag that's larger than it, 32 slots. And you can only have one anyways, plus it costs 500k. It's more like a fashion item than really a utility. And then the Raw Beast Hide. Now these two items, like the ores, are used, I think, to create transmogs. Correct me if I'm wrong, if they have other utilities that are really important, but... Mostly for the transmogs, I imagine, as well as the raw beast hide. That's why they always keep a very stable price. Um, but the sumptuous fur sells the fastest and the easiest because sumptuous fur, useful for the bags. So you could swap it out. Uh, about every day, I'd say each character gets about 4k resources. So now this changes in price, how much it costs each day with each trader. So you can't always get it at 16. I'd recommend buying whatever's the cheapest, but considering they're all 16 right now, I'd go with Sumptuous Fur. So let's say I spent my 4k resources on Sumptuous Fur. That day, and each Sumptuous Fur sold for, let's just say, 3 gold. It's 750 a day per character that does this, right? Now, again, prices change. They're not always 16 resources. So if you have 10k resources and you need to dump them, dump them in something else that's cheaper that day. Um, but if you're a tailor, you can take your sumptuous fur. Like if your alts have no professions that you care about, take the sumptuous fur that you get from the vendor, fly over to your tailor emporium, place work orders, then use the work orders to craft your own hexweed bags. Since hexweed bags sell fast, sell easy, and they're uh, worth quite a bit. So they're like 1700 each. Not bad. And they sell easily. Um, the scavenger, the scavenging yard? Yeah, salvage yard. Sorry, salvage yard. Uh, it allows you to get the large crates of salvage, which then can be salvaged. And you get random items like that, as well as resources, and occasionally items like that. I got some just fur. It's not nearly as great as it used to be, but... It's still profitable. And then you use your enchanter duty and uh, go over here. And you can disenchant these blue items that you receive. They're just used as transmog. There's no other utility aside from that. I don't think you'll be equipping a 610 item level on your characters. So um, you just use the enchanter study, disenchant them, and then boom, you get Drainic Dust, which can then be sold. Um, price of that varies, but I mean, it's free. You get it doing AFK business pretty much. So, not bad. It adds up quickly, and uh, there's your profits. Now, you also, from the salvage yard, get, like, these fortified armor enhancements and stuff. I'd use those to upgrade your characters, because getting to 695 on all your characters is really useful. It allows you better success in your missions. The missions can contain lots of things. Like you can see all the resource missions. But look here. Like, occasionally the toys pop up. Or the, the elixirs, like the elixir, look at that. The price of it on my server is 18k right now, but it's 11k average, and they sell very fast. Like, that's one of the easiest things to sell. Um, you get these occasional low low things, it's resources and stuff, um, but they still sell as well. Um, this is junk now, obviously. It has no utility, but the medallions of the Legion still sell very well as also. Uh, Colfist Gronly, I don't see him on here, but... He also sells really easily, 2k each. It's just the higher your item level of your characters, because you see these are pretty high item level missions, 675. So if every character is 675, you could get 100% on all these missions. 
easily. And then that guarantees you whenever you see these pop up, profit, profit. You know what I mean? Uh, that's what it's about. So using the salvage yard to get all these your characters to 675 is a great way to do it. As well as getting the bonus junk you get from it. Um, oh, the level 2 trading post. The reason why I say this is not AFK, but it's an option if you want to make more garrison profit with pretty, pretty ease, I would say. It was pretty easy. And um, what you're going to do, now it might vary for the horde, because of course Secrethra's Rise is the closest to the Alliance. But once you come out to this guy and you uh, use your resources, you'll you'll buy, like, for the Alliance, Secrethra's Rise. For the Horde, I know your garrison is up here. So you're going to want to get one that's in a close proximity to your garrison. And just do three missions. So I would buy Secrethra's Rise because it's right here outside my garrison. Fly down there and do three missions. You have to fly down, do it, come back, fly down, do that. It takes about half an hour. But it'll unlock a garrison invasion, which I'd recommend inviting your friends to because it doesn't matter if uh, how many people are in it. If you're a multi-boxer, you can do it on one character and then invite your other two accounts and uh, get 12 caches from this. But what it does is each week you can do an invasion. The invasions give items. Uh, they give mounts. They give uh, transmog stuff, junk, like inside the caches. And then they can also give parts for the trading post level 2. That's what the trading post level 2 unlocks. It unlocks parts to unlock the auction house inside of your garrison. Which, there's one part that is limited to raids as well as the invasions. And it's the arcane focusing lens. So if your trading post is level 2, you can get that. If you get platinum, which is very easy to solo at 110. I've gotten platinum on... a uh, many occasions very easily solo 110 if uh, you have platinum you'll get four caches and in each of these caches you have a chance to get the arcane focusing lens which is worth 15 to 20k so if you were to get lucky you could get it in all four that's 80k just for doing your weekly invasion that may take you like less than an hour of your time you could get unlucky and not get a single one but in two of the caches the platinum and the gold you have a chance at mounts in the platinum you have a chance to summon a world boss which again gives you another chance at the mounts as well as the arcane focusing lands i mean just it just adds up but that's not afk i want to specify that's not afk if you want to do the afk stuff get these basic buildings lunarfall inn barracks tailoring emporium sandwich yard Chanter study. Tailor and Emporium, limited only to tailors. If your alts have no professions that you care about, make them all tailors. Make them hex weave bag creators. That's all their utility is going to be. And then, boom, AFK profits. Hope that explanation worked for you. I hope it was clear enough to understand. If you have any questions, as always, just drop me comments. Get your followers all up to that nice 6 9 Sorry, guys. These guys are working, so they don't actually have the 675. But get your followers to 675 so you can beat every mission when it appears. And get yourself the uh, maximum profits from your missions as well as the maximum profits from your buildings. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.